Today, we're gonna make a sci-fi no-budget set from a lunch tray? We are, let's go! Hey, how's it going? Anthony Fro here, Crate Sci-Fi. Well, today, I'm gonna make a no-budget sci-fi set from a lunch tray. <laughs> I mean, technically, it's a serving tray, but lunch tray sounds a little more rock and roll. Right, so I talk about this a lot on the channel. So it's all about the silhouettes, right? So I was out at the Goodwill. Sometimes I go through there looking for furniture to refinish and stuff like that. And I saw this joystick. As always, I was just like, oh, that's cool. I walked away and then I, I'm like, oh, I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> so I went and bought the joystick. And then on my way home, I passed the dollar store and you know, I got one of these trays. Um, I use these in another build I'll link to. This is how I did a, I did a whole wall with these trays. I got like a juicer, like an orange juicer and um, a calculator, right? So the whole thing I think was about seven bucks. But the, the main thing I wanna get across in this video and hopefully I will is that, you know, we're gonna glue a calculator to this. We're gonna glue a, a joist. That we're, you know, we're gonna glue stuff to this and we're gonna paint it. So when we're working on it, we're gonna look at this and it's gonna look like what it is it's a bunch of stuff glued on um to to a tray you know but the point is you know that i always say on this channel that you know with film props it's, it's about color and silhouette and and sort of like getting an impression of something because it's you know when when you do other things like build models or build props from films you like or whatever it's all about looking at that object but the objects that i build here are all about being one tenth of a frame, right? So I think with this, I can really illustrate that, right? Because we're gonna be working on this for a while and we're just gonna be looking at a tray with stuff glued to it. But while I'm working on this, I'm gonna give my, my buddy Clint, um, actor, musician, he shows up in some of my films and demos stuff and I'll get him to come in and we'll do like a little demo so I can sort of further illustrate what I'm talking about, right? So let's take this lunch tray <laughs> and build a sci-fi set, let's go. All right, looking at the loot. Like I said, it's just a lunch tray. Got a bunch of those on the wall, really like them. Got the calculator, the joystick, orange juicer. Now we're gonna make something. <laughs> so as I always do with these, just sort of ponder, think, huh, maybe this here, just kind of get a rough idea, sort of dipping in my toes. So now I'm just cleaning up uh, this controller, getting rid of the wire, get those suction cups off the bottom. The sticker or price tag was a little pesky. So I'm getting out, uh, I think I'm gonna go get some acetone. Just got that off with a knife. You know, just sort of basic stuff, right? And, and why I like to do this stuff too, it's kind of like eases you into it, right? It's like a little acetone on there, let me, Get rid of the sticker, think about what I'm gonna do. You could call it procrastinating. <laughs> you could call it planning. But, you know, we're turning uh, a bunch of junk into something cool, right? So I got some 100 grit here. Definitely gotta sand this all up because we're gonna be putting so many coats of paint on this that if you just put it onto like the industrial, you know, industrial produced plastic, it's it's just not gonna stick, right? So hitting it pretty aggressively with sandpaper, trying to get like all the cracks and crevices. Um, here I got just some plastic wood because this is not a, a hero piece. You know, I'm not gonna use Bondo. I'm just gonna use this plastic wood. This is gonna be just fine. Screw holes are in seams are definitely, you know, everything has a cost, right? So. When you're using inexpensive toys and manufactured things that get you a lot of the way there because of the silhouette, it saves you a lot of work, but you do have to do things like get rid of the, the screw holes, right? Because those are sort of subliminal giveaways. So here I'm just um, sanding up this tray because again, this is going to get painted. Got to get rid of the made in China or made in USA, whatever the made in is and uh for sure this juicer is not gonna accept paint without a nice 100 grit sanding and um i i also like i said 
you know, as I'm sanding, I mean, I'm showing you just sanding, but there's definitely like the, because the sanding is, is sort of methodical. It's like you're pondering, you're just, you're doing, you're working on the project, right? So it's not just mindless sanding. You're like thinking about what you're going to do And here. You know, I definitely move things around in different iterations. And what I try to do is just sort of, you know, you just try everything that's possible kind of squint at it and then i'm just sort of like you know i know i initially wanted to put that joystick dead center right but then when it's right in front of you it's like oh, no i think it's better on the side and then here i just had that one space and i'm like you know what let me just print up something real quick now i'm gonna 3d print here i just made this in photoshop like super simple now um you could just glue another thing from the dollar store on there, right? Or another Greebly or another Bits and Bob. I'm just doing this because I'm, this is like 70, 80% dollar store goodwill. I'm just adding a 3D part in there because I can, but you certainly do not have to do that. And you'll see, this is very minimal. I just did a basic line drawing, brought it into Tinkercad and just raised it a little bit, right? So then now you have, it's just like a, like a two, three, maybe four, <laughs> two, three, four millimeter high little doodad. And I just shaped it to, to fit on that tray. But again, broken record, that could have certainly been a, you know, like a, a dollar store kitchen utensil or something. But I felt confident enough that, you know, I have enough sort of found in dollar store things on here that, you, you know, you get the idea. So now I'm getting ready to paint things. So I like to just use a little isopropyl alcohol. You know, you could just use water just with the alcohol cleaning things off. It just helps you to keep things moving because the alcohol will flash off very quickly. Whereas if you're cleaning this with water, you would want to make sure that it was completely dry, right? Where the alcohol, it's just sort of evaporates as soon as you put it on there and then you're clean and ready for paint. So it's always a good practice to do that. And I found that these days it's better to just buy big quantities of it, like of, off of Amazon instead of getting it locally. Cause that's somewhere where you'll, you'll save money on things like isopropyl alcohol. All right. So now, uh, this calculator, this kind of goes through an evolution. You'll see later at first I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to save the buttons and uh, I mean the display panel and that. And I'm gonna abandon that, but like I said, I always like to, to show you these processes because maybe in your case, you don't wanna abandon that, right? So now um, I thought about it and I was gonna screw and I was gonna super glue and I was like, you know, I think for this, what I'm trying to achieve with this sort of down and dirty, you know, no cost set is I think hot glue is the way to go. And hot glue is really great for sticking things together <laughs> that shouldn't be stuck together, right? You got two things that never been together before, get your hot glue. And it's also frees me up to kind of put things where I feel they should go, right? Um, so here I'm just marking uh, with a marker just so that what I found with the, especially with hot glue is, is you want to stay within and give yourself a little tolerance because when you squish it down, it's going to want to spread out, right? And you don't want to have that glue seeping out all over the sides. So I just try to, you know, I'm not overthinking it, but I'm, I'm just sort of like planning it, right? So there I have that custom piece. Like I said, not a lot going on there. Very simple. You know, it took me a couple hours, probably an hour to design, an hour to print, but you could very easily just be putting, you know, some kind of like little hardware store thing from the dollar store that has a cool texture glue that on there well yeah so now i'm starting to get a feel for this so now the juicer is kind of like a control knob the putting the controller all the way on the right is kind of making it maybe like steering and then the calculator is maybe like some kind of like coordinates thing I don't know, but like I said, just sort of making this up as I go along. And then it felt a little bare to me there. So now I'm doing the sort of improvisational part of all this. I'm like, oh, it needs a little something. Then I just go to my junk bins, which, you know, everybody, hopefully you all have like junk drawers or just stuff, right? So I have those wires. I'm like, okay, 
Let me put this wire here. And I'm not overthinking it, but I'm like, okay, let me put this tube here. It's like, maybe this is a stolen ship, right? And this little tube here is how the person who stole it was able to hotwire it, right? Again, don't think about that too much. It's just that occurred to me and it just sort of like, okay, that justifies it, right? It's like, but what is it really doing? It just makes it visually more interesting because I know like when I do the paint treatment, it'll, it'll make that pop, right? So you'll have a nice silhouette, shadows, colors, as opposed to just like a rounded piece um, that I think is, is far less interesting, right? And now I'm, I'm rocking with the hot glue. So I know, eh, I'll just stick it on there. <laughs> Square peg, round hole, right? Square peg, lunch tray. And now we're having a lunch tray set, right? Starting to look like something. And, you know, off camera, that's the other thing with the hot glue is like that tube didn't want to stay down, but all I had to do was just hold it down with my hand and probably, you know, off camera is probably like two minutes and now it's there forever. So not bad. Um, and then here I'm like, oh, I have this little hardware piece. I think I used one of these when I did the uh, uh, cyberpunk style mask and it was just in my eyesight. So I just grabbed it. I was like, yeah, let me put this here. Is it there for any real reason? No. Nope. So now I'm gonna use this uh, flat black to give everything like a base coat. And then now it starts to come to life, right? Now you're like, okay, this looks like something. All right, you know? And again, you know, because we're doing this step by step and I wanted to demonstrate later, like, yeah, you know, this is a film piece, right? We're looking at it now, it's like, it's like, yeah, that's a juicer, that's a calculator, that's a wire, you know, it's like, it's a little goofy looking. But, you know, stay with me and I'll, I'll reveal at the end what we're going to do. So now I'm just going to do a dry brush. And what this is going to do is just kind of give it a metallic vibe, a metallic sheen. Very easy, very inexpensive. I think I've mentioned before, it's like this folk paint, this craft paint that's silver. I've probably had that same bottle of paint for maybe three years now because I primarily only use it in this application. And I use it a lot, a real lot. The whole Mandalorian costume and weapons are this. And I still have like more than a half a bottle of this stuff. So now you see it's starting to look like an object, right? Like a metal object. So now uh, you'll see the hairdryer coming out a lot in this build because I'm really trying to make this a one day build. Right, I don't know if you notice there, I'm sucking down the coffee. So I'm, I'm keeping the train rolling here. So now to break it up, you always wanna to try to have at least three colors. Um, it just kind of makes it a little more interesting. And what I'm gonna do here is because I did everything like silver, I'm gonna do some red anodiz anodization. I'm gonna anodize it with some paint and I'm just being careful to mask off the areas where I don't want the paint. Again, the hairdryer, because I'm kind of just trying to keep this trucking. And I'm going to do a lot of masking here. So um, I really like the Tamiya model masking tape. Because what tends to happen if you're moving fast, if you use like the, the cheap like blue painter's tape and put that on, on paint, especially if it's freshly painted, there's a really good chance you're going to peel it off. But I found with the the like pro Tamiya masking tape, primarily for like model hobbyists, this stuff, uh, the tack is such where it really doesn't um, pull off your paint. And anytime you see me put the blue, it's typically over the yellow, right? So here I'm just hitting it with this, uh, this red anodized paint. And it really just, you know, it's one of those things where it's a really adds a lot of value and it's a very easy step right it's starting to look um starting to look like something and with the red it kind of gives it a little bit of a kind of an evil vibe right like i guess this is a bad guy ship and then now i'm just sort of like oh okay let me do the buttons and it's like 
you know, n none of this stuff is planned out. It's just sort of I look at it and I'm like, okay, how far do I go before it's too far, right? And then I think I'm going to paint like two or three more things, if memory serves me. And then I, you know, I painted the wires there off camera because, um, you know, they, they didn't match. And I like that they're all red now. And this is going to get all beaten up anyway. So now I have these little elements on my 3D printed part. I'm gonna hit some of those with the with the red anodized paint. And you're starting to see like, it's starting to look like something, right? So it's like we had, I don't know, seven, eight random things. And now by doing this painting treatment, everything's starting to become unified, right? This is starting to become one thing. It's starting to become a set piece, an object, right? And you'll see here that the system I just created while building this, right? It's like, okay, dry brush silver, mask it off, anodize red. And it was like, oh, that works. And so now I'm just rinsing and repeat it. This is definitely something I've not done before, but I did that first, you know, that juicer piece. And I was like, oh, this works, right? So now I'm leaning into it. It's that simple. So here again with the hairdryer, because I'm really trying to pump this out. <laughs> and, I, and I wanted to kind of challenge myself to do that too, because I was like, okay, let's, let's pretend like I need this tomorrow for like a short film, right? And there you go, right? That's starting to look like something. So now I'm gonna dirty it up. But before then, like I said, three colors, so now I'm gonna add just little gold highlights. Could you see how with the red and the silver, how it's kind of uniformed and it's, I don't know, it's just sort of like locked in, right? But as soon as I just add like these little wisps of gold, it becomes another thing, right? And I think you're seeing that before your eyes, right? It's like, it's not amazing, like the greatest thing in the world, but that's better, right? It's cooler, it's more interesting, it has more depth, has more value. So now um, I'm just gonna do a really basic acrylic wash. I think you've seen me do the uh, oil, the water-based oil paints before, which I think is a, is a cooler wash, but for me, that's more with a hero prop, right? This, like I said, is just a set piece, like I'm gonna demonstrate at the end. It's just about the silhouette of this, right? We're still just looking at a juicer and a, and a video game joystick and a calculator, right? And we're staring at it for however long this video is now and that's all it is. So that's not that impressive, but we're setting this up to be sort of a component of something bigger and it's gonna work very well in that role, right? So now I got uh, my sludge wash on there and it kind of mats everything to down and unifies everything right so it starts to look like a real object so now i'm gonna hit this with some clear and now it, sh it should be done right so i'm looking at that and then i'm just like nah, you know what i don't think that this is working for me right it's like that just looks like a calculator and i had to stop everything so I <laughs> pause, you know, I went into Tinkercad real quick. I was like, let me just print out a piece. And then here, um, you know, again, you could just leave it. You could just use something else. But for me, it was like, you know what? I just, I just gotta fix this one thing. And if it didn't bug me so much, I, I kind of don't dwell on these things, but it bugged me just enough where I was like, you know what? Let me fix this. And and it probably would not have mattered. But like I said, it just kind of got stuck in my head. So then I had to I had to deal with it. <laughs> so here, again, it was like almost disaster when I broke that. It smashed into a million pieces. But I just used uh, my shop vac, right? And then so now I'm just doing touch-ups. And like I said, I'm trying to do this in one day. So now... Um, this really threw a wrench in things, but here we're gonna like recap what we just did, right? So this is a quick version of, I had to do all these processes uh, to this one piece. So it was sanded, the black, doing the silver dry brush that I wanna do with the anodized. 
and then I'm going to do the gold. So it was like, you know, so this is like a recap. <laughs> this is like the cliff notes of everything we just did, right? So there it is. And then now the sludge wash. And it's like, once you're in this stage, you're like, oh, okay, I'm glad I did that. It was like, I didn't really want to go back and do all that work. But now that I popped that in there, I'm like, yes. All right. A little hot glue. And by now, you know the drill, right? It's like, you know how this works. So I'm doing that and I'm looking at that and I'm like, ah, yes, much better. Maybe to you, it didn't matter, but to me, right? I'm building this, I'm like, okay. But now um, I'm looking at this and now I wanna demonstrate to you, I talk about this all the time on the channel. I say, this is not an object to be looked at, to be coveted, to put on a shelf. This is just one component that's gonna be in a film for like, 30 seconds right so i thought you know what let me just demonstrate what i'm talking about all the time when i say that so there's a piece of foam right that's something that i made that will turn any chair into a sci-fi chair right here i have a music stand you can use a little table you could use a cardboard box whatever you need so now the person's going to be sitting there then now that's our spaceship console right so whoever the actor is that's going to be right in front of them and then that shot is just going to be framing that console right so i'm setting up some lights and all this is just because it's something i say so much on this channel about the silhouette and you know not to focus you know we're not going to be looking directly at this it's just going to be a component of a whole thing going on and i thought you know what let me just demonstrate that right so here i am i'm just setting it up um, and, and making sure that everything is sort of working the way I planned. I'm, I'm just taking a minute, you know, I'm trying out different lighting setups, just trying to get something that works. This light kind of has the, <laughs> the police light thing going on for a second. I thought I was going to do that. I ended up not doing that, but you know, even now you, you start to see like you're, you're watching me do stuff and you're looking around and it's just that set piece is just floating there. It's all of a sudden, like when we're building, we're staring at it and it's a little funky looking. But even now, just watching me set up, like there, it's just it's just a part of something else, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I, once I have that all set up, right? So there you see, just to remind you, like this is what it looks like when you're staring at it as opposed to just a second ago when I showed you it in light. And then now I'm gonna demo it. I'm gonna bring in uh, my actor friend, Clint, and we're gonna do like a little scene for you. fun right and um you know broken record but like you know you look at it like this actually like this it's not even that bad right when we were looking at it on the on the on the bench it's pretty clear what it is but like here in the frame we got the blue in the back i'm talking all this stuff's going on all of a sudden it's a set piece right so it's like kind of like that so yeah so hopefully that um fired up your synapses gave you more ideas um as far as the people you know who are inevitably going to be like well that's not no budget that's seven it's like look so it's like you have a budget which is a lot of money i've never had that right and then i work in like low budget is maybe for a feature a couple of hundred thousand for a short one to ten thousand dollars and then no budget means that you don't have a budget, but you're still spending money, right? So it's, you know, maybe 50 bucks out of your pocket or, or something like that. And then that's no budget. And then like, that's low budget. And then like micro, no, no budget, no budget is like, 
you know, you put aluminum foil on your friend's head and, and film them with an iPhone. <laughs> or you dress up in, in costumes uh, that you have for Halloween or cosplay and, you know, film it for nothing. And also talking about friends, that's my buddy Clint Carney, who was in the Mandalorian thing. We worked together a lot. He's a great filmmaker, musician. Uh, he stepped up and uh, put on the costume. That costume I made years ago, I'll link to that. So, yeah, pretty straightforward. I think, um, you know, to reiterate, I felt confident throwing a couple printed pieces in there because you could certainly easily not do that, right? And just glue on another greebly from, you know, some interesting shape or something that you found at the dollar store or, you know, in your junk box of stuff that you saved. And um, pretty straightforward. Well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, check out the merch shop. Got the hats, got the shirts. Buying that really helps the channel. You know, and subscribe if you're not subscribed. It's up to you. That does help. But remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs>